According to a report from the International Energy Agency, by the year 2020, the United States could be exporting more oil than Saudi Arabia. And by 2035, we could, in fact, be getting by on our own supply of oil and natural gas. When this came out, it was huge news, right? American energy independence, it's supposed to be awesome. But we thought to ourselves, you know, can't we do better than that? There must be new technologies out there we could be looking at. And when we looked around, we discovered, yes, there are lots of them. These are the ideas that we think stand the best chance of bringing home true American energy independence. Here's the thing about solar energy. The sun puts off an incredible amount of power. The sheer potential in terms of, of the solar energy available to us is off the charts but we are terrible at collecting it. Think about your average city, right? I mean, think about all of the places where solar power, right, the sun's energy, hits a surface during the day. The top of every delivery truck, every fire escape, right, the roof of every apartment building, all of these could conceivably be harvesting the sun's energy. The thing is, you can't just build, you know, big rectangular photovoltaic panels and all this stuff. You need a way of getting something sort of light, resilient, sort of beautiful into a cityscape for people to accept it and want to have it be part of their lives. We've come to Midtown Manhattan to shake hands with Pavilion. It's a company of two architects and an engineer. They basically combine an existing photovoltaic technology with a new fabric execution to make a real architecture out of the need for solar power. I really like the elegance of solar. Because I'm sort of dumb, it's very simple to me. The sun shines and the electricity is produced. You know, in 1998, we built the first photovoltaic tent in the world. And so 1998 was really when, you know, Todd and Robert started developing these technologies with the Department of Defense and saying, why don't we take this building block, this small building block that's flexible, that we can move around, and let's put it on flexible surfaces. Let's put it on curved surfaces. So rather than laminating it into a piece of glass, we're going to integrate it onto a piece of fabric or a piece of flexible metal. Then you start to go think about where are there flexible materials in the world? There are endless possibilities, and that's the most exciting thing. People are coming to us with clothing, and they're saying, how would we make clothing solar powered? A lot of what you guys are doing now is purpose-built stuff, but yeah. what about improvising in today's sense? Well, settings? the curtain is a perfect example. We have this project building solar-powered curtains. They're actually interior curtains in an all-glass skyscraper, and when the sun hits the curtains, when they're closed, they produce enough electricity to power all the lighting in the building. It's a platform, and now people are coming to us because we have the platform, and they're saying, well, could you do this, 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 and this? And we say, absolutely, why not? This is a building facade element. They've designed these shade structures on the facade. This is about two stories high, actually, and they're actually clear membranes. Behind these clear membranes, they've designed some custom solar arrays, and uh, we're doing the manufacturing, engineering, and production. I can set up this model to show me any elevation of the building at any time of day throughout the course of the year and show you what the sun is doing and how the sun is hitting those modules and we can check for problems of self-shading. It feeds back to the electrical engineering design because you can see that there's a group of modules here that's seeing different light condition than a group here. So we might wire this group separate from this group. I don't want to bring down this whole group of modules to the lowest performing cells. And that's what happens if you wire everything a certain way. Most solar panels in the world are invisible. They're hidden away on rooftops or they're hidden away in solar farms. We're not interested in doing that kind of work. We want to capture the visible market of solar structures where they look great in public spaces. What's the technical threshold that you would like to see crossed in your lifetime? It's taking the most flexible solar cell and putting it into the most flexible fabric. In a matter of time, we're going to have that t-shirt that crumples up yeah. and you throw it in your washing machine yeah. and it still charges your iPhone or it is an iPhone. Where we are now is a far cry from where we need to be. In your opinion, how much can solar account for in the energy mix? We're not trying to solve all of the world's energy problems. 
We're not. In my mind, we're not competing with traditional solar panels, and we're not competing with wind, and we're not competing with hydro. We're not pretending that we're going to solve all the world's energy problems, but we're a part of the solution. I think what's funny about talking to these guys is I expect them to say, you know, that they're going to be the next nuclear power. They're going to power every car on the road, but that's not their way at all. They just want to make a, a contribution to the total energy mix, and they think that their product can do that. And so I think what it makes me realize is that as I talk to people across the spectrum of alternative energy, I'm seeing that nobody thinks that their thing is the thing. Instead, we're all going to come to depend on a lot of little solutions, this diverse economy of alternative energy to solve our needs in the future.